the next session. Um, again, we are here um, uh, in a context of Meet the Neighbors project, the, uh, the, 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 the network of uh, uh, organizations uh, somehow gathered uh, together on invitation of quarantine. Uh, more than a year now, um, about in the context of the artist residences uh, in the, in the context of uh, uh, local communities and local spaces. Um, the, I have to explain more that we, as a, as a living part or the gallery gallery, are excluded from this presentation. We, we, in a way, we did our presentation already yesterday. Uh, but what I think are the first, very first artists. Uh, um, uh, uh, having residence in in, in context of the of presented uh, the, the part of the of the outcomes and the, 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 the materials which now we we, we slowly start working on uh, and we'll uh, uh, have probably the, the final shape around late spring uh, uh, outcome here. Um, so the, maybe the very last uh, word for now before I uh, get the microphone. Masaka, who also uh, had been with this project from the very beginning and uh, support us as a, uh, as an advisor from the from the very beginning. And that uh, thanks to the uh, IPA partnership with Cal uh, Round, uh, we can be here not only in this crowd of people uh, gather together, but uh, this session is also uh, live streamed. So uh, those who could not for some reason come to we can also be with us. Uh, possibly, unfortunately, there will be no uh, possibility to ask any question. Um, so far, in the, for the next two hours, the, the floor is yours, and uh, it's not only the presentation of the project, it's also exchange between us of what uh, already happened, and uh, as we put it in the in, in frame of the title, uh, what we know so far. Well, thanks a lot. Um, uh, yeah, the, what we know so far, um, uh, this experience of Meet the Neighbors is the most pragmatic title of the panel I've uh, moderated, I think. Uh, but it, it, fits quite, it fits quite well. I mean, hopefully it will be interesting also for you that are not involved in the project, because I think that it, it will bring uh, up a lot of the questions that we were dealing with already, like what does it mean to go out of the institution, what does it mean to expand the institution, have a purpose institution, and what does it mean as an artist to go into a neighborhood which sometimes a little bit sounds like the jungle far away or uh, so what does it what does it mean actually uh, to also create this distance and to consider yourself as part of this neighborhood in a way and all these questions I think come up in very different ways. So I hope that will be uh, uh, also interesting for you. Uh, and it's definitely interesting for everybody involved in the project because as you know like Things don't develop normally like just uh, they're written in the concept. So, so meet the neighbors. I will ask Richard in a moment and after I introduce everybody uh, to tell a bit about briefly about the project and such. But in a way, meet the neighbors already tells it quite well. So it's a wide, quite a rather wide frame to a certain degree of this new project, and everybody has a different take in it. And when you start talking about it, it sounds abstract, or you project your own things in it, into it, and then it develops. So I think it's a good moment to look at these projects uh, while they are still in the making. So there's some outcomes already, like here in Lublin, uh, which you mentioned. Um, but there's also still uh, some time to pass, so, so it still can also change the direction. So we will uh, see a bit about, about this in concrete case studies. And so the procedure will be a bit like so far. Uh, uh, each project will be presented. And we have a bit more time for that. Uh, to go a bit deeper, so everybody has about around 15 minutes, 10 15 minutes to do that, and then we'll have enough time to uh, to dig into it deeper afterwards. Um, so uh, with me is uh, Cecile Bakke from uh, Comité de Bichini, um, who will introduce uh, the the first residency that happened in November uh, in June, and then they came back already in November. Um, Nick van Boer from Grand Theater Groningen. Um, then uh, Richard Gregory from Carotide in Manchester, and uh, Francesca uh, Masoero from uh, Marrakesh. And also this, uh, I will not introduce the institu institutions you work for because I think it will be part of your presentation, but uh, what makes it 
interesting that you already see it's it spikes quite a geographical range of places with all the social political etc implication that has but it's also very different institutions so two i would say middle-sized theaters uh, a theater company an artist space uh, uh, which already offers very different uh, different approaches of this so um, with no real specific order maybe if you would uh, if you would start on the paper you first yeah. Do you have the first of the papers or you have to start? <laughs> I think it's because of the last, yeah, the B, the last name. I don't know who knows the computer. with other artists 
which are associated for many years to the project, to my artistic project. And uh, we have, as a dramatic center, we have uh, several missions, productions, co-production with other artists, diffusion, that means we invite shows and performances, and also something, I'm afraid it is very, very French, uh, in French, you said sensibilisation du public. I try to translate to we must uh, um, build relationship with other people. So who are other people? That people we are, uh, which form the audience in the community. So we we have this question and this mission. Uh, to sensibilize people around La Comédie Pétune to see our shows. We receive uh, money, so subventions, is right? Subvention? Uh, from four uh, different source, uh, sources, uh, government, uh, from the Minister, Ministry of Culture, uh, regional council in the north of France, région Hauts de France, because Pétune is in the north, uh, Departmental Council, uh, which is a uh, um, smaller structure than the Regional Council among the territories around between, and the city of between, which is not exactly a city but uh, an agglomeration, because uh, between is a very tiny town, but um, all around you've got a lot of uh, other city, and now this, uh, this is a, an agglomeration concerning 200,000 people. 2,000 and 2, 250, uh, 250,000 people, approximately. So, uh, let's, let's go to Betune. So Betune is this uh, small uh, city, not so far from Paris, because it's in the south of North. Uh, as you can see, it's an historic city, just like many cities in the world. Uh, you can see this is not a church, it is a beffroi, which is really, really a great difference with Poland, uh, because uh, a beffroi is a uh, like, uh, not Republican, but like um, uh, monument. And after, so many pictures, this is the cathedral, uh, this is the Beffroi, and you can see there are uh, uh, many, many uh, games to do in Betune. This is not ironic. And, uh, okay, this is the official pavement of the city, and um, the street. And uh, the pictures you see told and relate, relates that uh, Betune is a very quiet city with uh, People have money, everything is okay, you got the before, you can, uh, can have a, a Merry Christmas and all that sort of thing. That's obviously not true, because um, Béthune is in the Pas-de-Calais. Le Pas-de-Calais is one of the most poor departments in France. Uh, just one number uh, which is uh, terrible, uh, concerning the, the young people between 18 and 25 years old, the one of them, or about three, are, is unemployed. Unemployed without study, one about three, uh, 30, uh, uh, 33% of the young population. That's one of the, for in France, everything is relative, just the situation, but um, it's uh, awful uh, number. So the National Dramatic Center was looking for someone uh, who could be courageous and uh, work and trying to work with the young and poor people and unemployed people. That's me. But I wanted to. <laughs> I was really interested in it. Uh, that's why this question, uh, uh, when uh, I met Alan Tanakin and Richard and the quarantine uh, company. Uh, that was the first question uh, before the neighbors. It was how can we, as, as uh, artists that we are in different way, par parallel ways that we are, 
how can we uh, form projects with uh, people who doesn't nothing to do with Vienna? That, that is one of my questions of work for a very, very, very long time. So, uh, for me, the neighbors, we identify around between, in between and around between, three places. Uh, it could be interesting to invite artists in residency. And uh, for that, and I try to answer to the question of Martin this morning, where, uh, who are the partners in between? Um, we worked with the social landlords. In Bad Caleb, we have a lot of such social landlords. Uh, landlords. They are often owners of buildings, uh, often owners of old quarters, old mine quarters, because uh, this is a territory which is really, uh, in the story of this, ter this territory, uh, the mine, you know, the story of the mine is really, really important. Um, and uh, the landlord uh, tells us, okay, there is a, a place in the center of Bethune, which is called the Brynacht Residence, residence. Uh, Brian Hatch is the name of a doctor who founded it, I suppose. And uh, this is a building with uh, uh, approximately um, 80 persons living in it. Um, and there, there was a lot of, uh, there, is, there, there is a lot of uh, social problems and a lot of difficulties uh, in neighborhood, just like uh, we heard yesterday. Um, so our first partner uh, is uh, SER, SIA, which is uh, the acronym for this landlord. We invited uh, first, uh, we invited a French company. working on a documentary together with the Brecht. That means there is, there are, uh, in their show, in their work, it could, uh, sometimes there are people on the stage, sometimes not. But there is really a, uh, a real important uh, work on uh, sound, um, not only music, but words and spoken words and documentaries. That means that every show of La Bonne Passante is always uh, in, uh, like a thriller in a city, in a quarter, in a place. Uh, so that's why we invited the, them. They came uh, in June for two weeks uh, and they were our first neighbors in the Breinart residence. They were two, Benoit and Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen is uh, uh, an actress and a stage director, and uh, Benoit is a sound man, sound engineer, mixer, and a composer in a way. And uh, what is interesting in the residence is uh, they were afraid. They were afraid to uh, how to be a good neighbors. How how can we be good neighbors? And uh, they were afraid because they didn't know how the adventure could happen. And uh, in the first days, uh, something was very difficult for them, and they told us uh, it is difficult because uh, we live in the building, but nobody talks to us. Uh, okay, so we're going, to, we're going to knock on the door. But uh, when the door were open, uh, they tried to, to build a relationship, and it was very complicated because they couldn't come inside. Uh, so there were several days uh, wondering about what to do. And they find the found, uh, they imagine they can work in the, not in the building, but in the graveyard, the, the grave, the ground yard before the, just, just in front of residence. And there is something else which is very important. They discovered there, was, there is a shared garden just before the residence. And Benoit told me, but if there is a shared garden, there is something to share. These people, they share something because there is a garden to share. 
So, because they had the feeling, you know, that um, the people living in the building uh, wanted to, want, do not want to share anything. And in the young, um, in the, the yard, they organized what they call la cour d'histoire, that means the yard of the stories, something like that. And it was a meal, just like a meal, but they invited uh, another artist, which is also technical, but cooker, and cooker for uh, sweet, uh, sweet food. And they organized, not in the evening, but during the afternoon, uh, a meal, and they imagined uh, to act something for the sharing that uh, they would ask to every person to give something if uh, they, the la bonne passante, could they give uh, could give uh, a cookie or something to drink or something to eat, and it worked and it worked really great and, and we were everybody at the committee between say okay there's something rolling on, uh, it was difficult at the start but uh, something happened with the, this uh, yard of the story, so um, with this uh, yard of the story they met not only people living in the building but after the yard of the story they went at the cafe just across the uh, on the other side of the street the cafe which is named uh, Le Longchamp uh, the long field, something like that, and in in the total adventure, they met two hundred and fifty people. That means much more than only living, uh, but they had to find what to do, uh, th which is which was not a performance, but only a meeting, something like a meeting. So I've got some pictures because we were uh, in the center of Bethune. And now, uh, this is Kathleen, one of the performers. Uh, this is the cafe, and this is the residence at night. They wrote La Residence Brainart la nuit, at night. And uh, you can see uh, the, the, the flat. They were living as neighbors. Now, the residence. Tac, 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 tac. And after one or two pictures about. The cookies. <laughs> no, I'm looking for the yard. And this is after. Um, this is the yard, I think. Which was uh, a real moment for exchange. That's what happened. After, um, they were for two weeks, and uh, when they left, uh, some habitants uh, were saying, but uh, it's not possible they leave, because uh, we were, uh, if they are neighbors, they must stay with us. So it was a bit difficult to, to explain the project and the concept of residency, but Benoit and Kathleen told us, okay, there is something to do now because we have shared something with living and uh, eating cookies, and, but we have, record, we have recorded uh, many stories and memories. We have made pictures. We must, Came, we must come back to give something back. So they went back in November, just one week, because we invited them to, to, to present their, their work, their show, not uh, on the residence, but another show. And then uh, they organized something like a restitution of uh, pictures and uh, pictures and memories and sound memories at the comedy this time. And this is uh, very important for us because that means that people living in the residence has come at the theater for the first time of their life, for many of them. There were around 60 persons. And now we can build and um, continue to build relationship with them. But there are many questions. First, I have some uh, feedbacks uh, to share. Uh, the feedback uh, from the person living in the residency, uh, in the yeah, in the building. Some 
evident feedbacks about the artists themselves. Um, people say that uh, they were artists, uh, very, they described them as very simple person, very accessible persons, and they didn't think it was possible to be an artist this way. Uh, they said it would be good to have such neighbors, but our real neighbors are not just like them. Um, some people said it could be good to continue with other artists, because we said, but you know the project for me, the neighbors is to have other residences and other artists. Okay. Now some feedback from artists. The, exper the experience for us to, became neighbor to become neighbors. Um, first, just a point about uh, what they've done. Uh, they decided, Benoit and Kathleen, the both of them, uh, the second or thir third day, that they, have, they need to, to share what they were living with someone else. And each of, uh, each of them has been writing to his or her sister, they have a sister, both of them, uh, every day. So they have letters, uh, emails. Uh, they have recorded, just as told you. They have made uh, videos and pictures. And they have built a website, a small website, website which is open to receive other signs, other pictures, other letters, other, we don't know why, we don't know what, um, from the artists we will come in this residence after them. This is a small website, but which is open. And um, as I told yesterday, uh, the, the, the two artists uh, told me something I was uh, thinking it's important. They say, in fact, a good neighbor is someone you can count on. on. Someone you can, you can trust. That means that in, in this French reality, in this small town in the north of France, it is not the case. That's why there is a social problem. If the definition of neighborhood is, uh, is not, uh, for the moment, is not, okay, a neighbor is uh, someone you can trust and someone you can count on, there is a question. Um, and they, they, they let uh, another testimony about their experience about a shared memory and a shared transformation. What they said is that uh, if maybe we had changed or transformed something in the life of people living in the building, we've been changed too, as a person and as a human beings, I think. So uh, we... At the Comédie de Béthune, so let's talk now uh, about the team of the Comédie de Béthune. Uh, after this first experience, we think that it could be really interesting to purchase the residences in this place. We didn't know at the, at the beginning, but something has been, has been started. This is slow, just as you say, Moitza, uh, Moitza uh, this morning, this is very slow as a work, but we must continue with, our, with other artists. And some question. Uh, I think there is, uh, if I try to describe uh, what is the life of these people in the building, uh, they never go out or they cross the street to go to the cafe and back. So I think something could be really interesting as a name is to make them, propose them to, to, to travel, even a, a very short travel. And one of the, another question is how, how is it possible now to mix these people to with other persons, how can we organize a sort of meeting 
at the theater, at the comedy, obviously. Um, we've got many ideas about that. I think if you slowly okay. come to, to an end. Okay. Oh, you have something important to add? Uh, uh, no, I think. Uh, because we have the after. Other we have after. I think uh, later in the conversation, other things can still come up. So maybe also I will just not ask a follow-up question, but just collect uh, all all the projects, and then we go into yes. the conversation. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Nick, if you would do the next part. Okay, um, my name is Nick van Broeg. I'm the general manager of Grand Theater in uh, Groningen, which is a sort of semi-large town in the north of the country of the Netherlands. Uh, the Grand Theater has a, a, a history of uh, trying to be uh, a central place in the city and also in the region for the independent uh, artistic uh, community. Uh, they've been doing that for uh, since the 1980s, really. Uh, they were forced to, to uh, we were forced, we came in after bankruptcies, we were forced to, to restart the um, organization. And already after like six months or so, uh, Richard uh, uh, asked us if we want to be part of the Meet the Neighbors project. And that came uh, at a really good moment because we were really thinking of new ways to uh, be that sort of central uh, partner for the artistic community in the, in the city. Um, building on the traditions that we already uh, knew that already were there, uh, but also in a new way because... Um, we're a completely new team and we want to look at the um, surrounding city in a different way. So what we were looking at uh, from the context of Meet the, Neighbor, ne Meet the Neighbors is that we as a team in the Grand Theater were new. Um, uh, uh, a lot of us actually came to Groningen or came back to Groningen to work at the Grand Theater. So in a way, everyone, the whole city was, were new neighbors for us. But we looked at the city as a um, uh, as a whole, and we're uh, seeing some major changes in the city. And uh, one of them is the internationalization of the population. And there are three uh, major forces behind that. Uh, so what we try to do is meet the neighbors, to meet our new international neighbors. Um, and three ways of looking at that is the migration. Uh, international migration, refugees, uh, so basically people who did not choose to come to live in Groningen but ended up living in Groningen. Um, and because it's such a central town in the region, uh, if you end up in the region, you usually end up in the city. And the city, city is actually quite progressive uh, and really looks after um, uh, refugees once they're there. International students, uh, we have a big university and a large uh, uh, college and they are really aiming at international uh, students. And you can really notice, especially in the center of the city, that the population is changing, especially because of the international students. Um, and the third one is uh, uh, an emerging scene of creative startups. That's a relatively new thing in Groningen because it has art schools, it has a music school and a really good art school. Um, but usually people would come, uh, uh, do their education and then leave for Amsterdam or Berlin or wherever. But the last five to ten years, people, uh, young people uh, stay. They stay in the city and they try to start a career, um, not just in the city, but from the city. So they live in the city and they see the, the whole country and the whole world as their uh, work field. And they are usually quite internationally connected from the beginning. 
so they really have an impact uh, on the city also because the scene is growing, is very internationally oriented and also very internationally um, in its very international in its um, population. Um, what we do in the project Meet the Neighbors uh, is for every sort of section we do one project. So we're, as a partner, we're quite small. We only do three uh, projects, and even the projects are quite small. Um, that's mainly because when we decided to enter the project, we were just well, we were just revived for like 10 months, so we had no idea where we were going uh, and how f strong we would be at the, at, uh, uh, for the duration of the project. So it was safer for us to, to keep it small, and actually that's a really good decision. I look at the projects more as uh, sort of uh, guerrilla projects because they're really you know, sort of uh, concrete and quick because they only last for a few weeks and then, then it's over and then we uh, continue our business until we do the next one. But also guerrilla because we uh, look at them as ways of finding out new um, ways of connecting to new people in the city. We want to, because we are a building, it's the, what the discussion was uh, this morning. We are a building and uh, from that building we try to connect to the community and also of course we try to uh, attracts the community, but the building is always the center of our uh, activities, and the building is right in the center of the city. Um, we chose to do uh, what we call house exchanges, so we ask artists to, we, we look for partners uh, um, in not necessarily artistic partners, but social partners, for example, for the uh, migration project, we work together with a, um, an organization that's been around for 30 years and who look, uh, who um, create housing um, facilities for refugees, especially for refugees who have come to the Netherlands, their application to stay has been um, denied, but they cannot leave the country. It's a large group in every country, I think, in Western Europe, there's a large group of people that cannot, they're not allowed to stay, but they also cannot leave, and it's a difficult of course, a very difficult group of, of people, and they, uh, they're called Inlia, and they do very, very good work for this specific fragile uh, uh, group of people. And we're, we're really happy to work with them. So we asked two local artists to um, sort of go into residency in one of their housing projects, and at the same time we asked um, one of their inhabitants, or one of their guests, to live at the theater, because uh, we will also want to learn from this project how what a, a building or an organization as the Grand Theater can be for new people living in a city. And I think what better way to do that is to invite them into your house and um, have them uh, stay and have the conversations, have them uh, come to the uh, activities that we have and so we can uh, learn from that. Um, this was the first project. We didn't build a boat, but the boat is uh, where actually uh, I think about 180 uh, refugees live. Um, it's one of the housing projects, and it's obviously a large one, um, supported by the uh, city government. We had two local artists uh, staying at the boat uh, for a week. They didn't actually sleep there because that's too too much of a sort of intrusion in their... Uh, environment, but they were uh, there during the day and they uh, connected to some uh, of the guests uh, on the boat. And especially what they did is um, um, the, the guests on the boat took them into the city. The two artists actually were born in Groningen and these new neighbors uh, took them on tours through the city, so where they would go and they would really go to different places and they would really take different routes. So that was for them also really interesting. Uh, having new neighbors who actually use the city in a completely different way. Um, at, while they were there and after they were there, they also collected stories. They wrote a lot about their um, um, sort of reactions to the stories. We asked them, and also we there was um, the restrictions um, given to them by the refugee housing organization. Do not talk about family. Do not talk about the flight here. Uh, do not talk about uh, the legal situation, etc. So you can talk to them as your new neighbors, but don't ask after these issues unless they tell you. 
And even then, let them tell you what they want to say, but don't go ask questions. So that's what they did. So they really connected to them as neighbors, which is, in a way, a very human uh, uh, connection to make. And they really um, were impressed by that um, situation. The two guys on the right are the two uh, local artists. And, and in the background is the boat. And um, they made an artifact, and I'll show you later, uh, based on their experience. Um, the two guys are from a video collective in the city, so they, um, well, they started as a video collective and it started transforming into more performing arts uh, projects and also things like 3D and everything really technical, they love it. Um, but the organization that runs the boat uh, existed for 30 years and they sort of had a, um, um, if it weren't so cynical, you would call it a festival. Um, but it's not that good that they have been doing this for 30 years and it's so important still. But they were having um, international guests and all kinds of uh, activities also at the Grand Theater. And in that weekend, uh, we presented our results also. So these guys presented their 3D model of the actual ship. The ship, as you can see, is like a river cruise boat that's rented for this issue. On the inside, it's really funny because it's really built as a very luxurious river cruise <laughs> ship. <laughs> and now these people are living there. Um, and this is a 3D model. And what they did is, um, because these people are not allowed to be in the Netherlands, they're not allowed to be where they, were com where they came from, so actually they're not allowed to be anywhere. And what they did is build a replica of the boat. So if they leave or if the boat leaves, uh, the replica will still be in, in the city. Um, and what they did un under the uh, boat is sort of represent the colorful, um, uh, the colorfulness of the of the group of people living there. Because usually that's the part under the water, so you don't see it. It's the the, uh, the, um, yeah, the colorful or the diversity of the group of people living there. And they did a sort of uh, specific GPS uh, device built, they built into it that's used on ships. So you can always know where any ship in the world, where it is. They built it into this ship to sort of say, this ship, even if the ship is gone, even if um, you are a guest on the ship now, uh, and you leave, this ship has a GPS signal, and the signal is somewhere in Groningen. So it, you do have a place to connect to. You do have a place to sort of um, be uh, as a human being. I really like that concept, and, um, and it's a really nice artifact. And it's now in the general manager's room of the uh, refugee organization because he really likes it. Uh, at the same time, we invited someone into our theater. Uh, that's the man in the middle. He's been living in Groningen for 20 years. He was a refugee from Afghanistan, and he, um, is, uh, he has a really difficult uh, legal situation, but we never spoke of it. I know it, it, it's the case, but we never spoke of it because he's also a writer, and we started talking to him uh, as a writer. We are an arts organization. He is a writer. Let's talk about it because we didn't know him. So he told us what he, what he does. He's a, he writes poetry, he writes novels, he translates novels, he writes essays. Um, but he writes everything in Pashto, so no one in the city of Groningen can read it. Um, and he actually wrote a novel about two uh, men uh, traveling from uh, Kabul to the Netherlands in Pashto. And then we said, well, that's really strange because you wrote a book about us and we can't read it. So we organized uh, an evening at the, at the theater building uh, where we asked him uh, in the middle to, to read parts of the book. And um, the person uh, to the right uh, is just sort of simultaneously translating it into Dutch. Uh, so we get a, an idea of what it is that he writes about us. And afterwards, we could have a discussion uh, and a conversation uh, with him. We invited only a really small group of people, so it doesn't look really spectacular. Um, but this man really is really vulnerable. He, he lost his family uh, while he was already in the country. So we know a bit of his background. Uh, so we decided to keep it really small and we just people on invitation. 
Um, and it was one of the most amazing evenings in the whole season uh, for us as a theater organization because it was, um, he was always really modest, always really, uh, uh, he's, he's quite a small man, so he's also always sitting a bit like this and um, not very talkative, not very, can I leave now? And um, uh, is, is it okay now, so can I go? So he was always trying to, I don't know, almost, try to not be very present. But we gave him a stage, and he came in a suit, and even the people from India had never seen him in a suit, so he came in a suit, he sat at the table, and he was really sort of uh, the guest of honor, and he really played um, that role really well in that evening. So everyone was amazed that this person uh, that everyone had an image of, uh, you gave him a stage as a writer instead of a refugee, and he sort of really grew in that in that role, and it was fantastic. But what's even in, more interesting is that the parts that he wrote, we didn't find very interesting. So we asked him to read parts of his book, and we didn't really find these parts interesting. So we got into a discussion afterwards, would we consider this um, artist an artist? Would we consider him a writer if he were a Dutch? Writer, so it really sort of switched ideas in our heads. If we want to connect to uh, new neighbors like um, uh, Mr. Dakik, will that work if we stick to our ideas of what a writer is, or what literature is, or what art is, or what? So, to us, this was one of the most uh, impressive evenings in the whole season, even though there were only 13 people there. Am I slowly going forward? This is the second project with the international students. This is the uh, student hotel. We work together with them. It's a um, really big building in uh, um, sort of at the end, edge of the center. It's really big for that part of town. Um, and it, it, uh, there are, I think, about 300 international students living there. So it's really in a, a sort of icon of the internationalization of the university. We asked two uh, artists to go into residence, into the, the student hotel. They were there for three weeks. Um, the Moha Collective, two of them. And what they did is sort of try to infiltrate almost into uh, the student hotel. So they joined the cleaning crew, so they were able to enter the rooms. Um, they were at the reception, uh, so they spoke to everyone. They had they built a sort of open office in uh, in the downstairs uh, open area, and so they spent three weeks there trying to get to know the people living in that sort of bubble because it's a really strange and in a way um, uh, closed uh, space. They did all kinds of small artistic um, interventions to try to get stories and uh, but they had, had a really difficult time with the international students because they didn't really open up they uh, uh, closed it with uh, um, an activity sort of performance the revival of the international student where they uh, worked with one of the residents one of the international students who did sort of a Japanese ritual with him because he was really uh, trying to grow as a human being uh, in this this period of life, so they did this. Um, he actually sat there for ten to I think thirty minutes every day in the bicycle um, uh, basement. So they sort of had their uh, intervention uh, there, and it ended in the, in a result, and it ended also in a quite interesting blog that they wrote of their experiences in those three weeks. At the same time, we had uh, it had quite some um, attention from the media. At the same time, we invited two people, uh, international students, to live at the theater, um, which got so much attention that it oh, that it really surprised us. Every news um, media in the in the city um, came to us. Um, so we had two people living in, in the theater. This is a dressing room, but we built it into a student room uh, for them to stay. So they used the kitchen, 
they used uh, the cafe downstairs, they used uh, the whole um, building. They created a lunch uh, for everyone involved in the project at the same time. And in that moment, they also asked everyone to, to give them a, a sort of artistic uh, input for a little um, um, performance they made in the end. Um, I'll put this on quickly. It's a short... No, I won't put it on. It's a short film. Uh, they did a short performance in the end, and we had, again, a small um, uh, conversation afterwards with people involved in, in this uh, project. And again, it's in a way a really small project, but f it got a lot of attention, which makes it uh, uh, a lot bigger. But for us, again, it was a really good uh, project to get to know a group of people, a community in the city that we do not connect with at the moment, and they really gave us interesting um, ideas how we can connect to them, and not just marketing ideas, but also artistic ideas, um, how to create projects that can actually um, be of interest to an international uh, student community. Yeah, thanks. I think we, we again we yeah. do the questions afterwards. Thanks a lot for for this. It, I mean, it's interesting that also to see the exchange with the institution, which will be something I guess we'll pick up later on yeah. how to infiltrate also change or influence the institution. I think that's an important aspect. Uh, Richard, please. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with a, a, a brief moment uh, of, d of just talking about a little bit of personal history, um, which combines with our company's history. So um, uh, I started our company quarantine 20 years ago in November. Uh, so a month ago was our, our, our 20th birthday. Um, I started it with uh, Rennie O'Shea, who is my co-artistic director uh, and also my partner so we live together um, and uh, a designer our designer Simon Bannum um, <coughs> when we started the company uh, Rennie and I were, were living in a flat in the center of Manchester um, it was a it was a uh, uh, what we call in England we call it a council flat it was social housing um, so we, when we first began the company, we ran it from the spare bedroom of that, of that flat for several years. Now, 20 years on, we have an office. Quarantine has an office that's probably less than five minutes walk from where that, that, that flat is, right in the center of the city. Um, oh, I've gone back, sorry. Uh, that's us on the day that we left the flat eight years ago. Um, so we no longer live there. Um, I'm showing you the photograph because uh, I want you to just have a look at the the, the aesthetic of that situation. Um, so it's it, at the time when we set the company up in 1998, um, around about 2,000 people lived in the centre of Manchester. Um, Manchester, in common with, with many British cities, um, has never uh, since industrial uh, times had people living right in the center of the city. People tend to live in suburban situations. Um, over the last uh, 20 years, that's changed very dramatically. Um, so when, when, we, when we first set quarantine up in, in 1998, living in the city center was, was a, very, uh, a very different experience from, from the experience you would have now if you were to visit 
the city of Manchester or if you were to live in the city. Um, shops would, when the shops closed uh, at, then at 5.30, they don't do that anymore. Now shops stay open uh, sometimes throughout the night. Um, but when then shops would close at, at 5.30 and at that point the city centre would effectively become quite dead. There were some, some bars and some, some restaurants but not a lot of life, not a lot of activity in the city centre. Um, uh, the city is, the city of Manchester uh, is, is geographically rather small, relatively speaking. It's 20 miles from top to bottom and three miles across. And so at that point, uh, 20 years ago, it had a very small, it had a small population and, and because of that, it was considered to be a very, uh, a very, a relatively poor um, city in, in, in the British situation. Um, 20 years on, in 2018, there are now 52,000 people living in the city of Manchester. Um, in, the, in the broader uh, region, the imaginary region, if you like, of, of Greater Manchester, there are 510,000 people living. The Greater Manchester is made up of conurbations and suburban areas and other towns that are attached to the city. Manchester is very much the heart of that. Um, Manchester is currently an economic boom town. Uh, there are apartment buildings, office blocks uh, flying up, growing all the time. Um, it's, Manchester is the engine of uh, uh, a policy of the UK government uh, called the Northern Powerhouse, which is a, a, a strategy to move uh, power, sent decentralized power from London, to move economic power f uh, across the country. And Manchester is, is driving that. The, the, the regeneration, if you like, of Manchester's fortunes and the regeneration of the city in terms of its its housing stock and the, the, ra the rapid development of the, the city has been has been driven by uh, a relationship between the city government, the city can Manchester City Council, who are again a very interesting and, and unique uh, city council in, in the country in that they are the they at least they, they were, I'm not sure if it shifted in the last election, but they, they have been for a very long time the only city council in the country that had 100% members who were all from the Labour Party. They've driven the, the development of the city through cl very close partnerships and relationships with property developers and other partners. Uh, for example, uh, the University in Manchester is one of the, one of the largest landowners uh, in the city, very strong partnership between the city and the, and the university. Um, so the, this, this rapid development has attracted, uh, of course, a, 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 an enormous shift in, in population. Um, but not only in numbers, but also, I guess, in, in the characteristics of the population in, in the city. So um, the, the, the 52,000 or the 50,000 increase um, is substantially dominated, I think, by, uh, by young professionals. Um, it's the, 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 the demographic of the city uh, is relatively uh, narrow. People are being attracted into the city to, to live in these, uh, predominantly live in apartments and attracted to jobs that, 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 that are present in the city. Alongside this development, um, certainly in the last five to eight years, there have been a very significant and very visible rise in homelessness, people sleeping rough. Uh, in the city, very, very, very visibly present, um, and uh, lots uh, alongside the, the, the uh, inarguable sense that Manchester's economy has grown and is booming. Uh, questions about uh, in the housing situation about where is the place of affordable housing and where is the place for of social housing. Going back to uh, 
the fact that, that when we started the company, Rani and I were living in social housing, living in one of those council houses. One last statistic on Manchester's population. This is a, a, an estimate from the city council themselves that by 2030, so in 12 years' time, the population of the city uh, will have risen to something like 100,000 people. Now, of course, the, that rapid growth in, in population brings with it enormous challenges, challenges uh, about providing services for uh, uh, a much, much, much larger population. Um, so medical services, doctors, education, transport, uh, leisure, etc., etc., and significantly public space. Um, the vast majority of the uh, of the developments are private developments. Um, private developers often provide, and I'll talk about this in relation to tenancy, uh, will often provide uh, communal space or, or, or a shared garden um, or a shared yard, as, as Cecile referred to in, in, in Bethune. Um, uh, but those spaces are, uh, are rarely public. They're, they're available to the people who live in that particular uh, apartment situation. So, um, Rennie and I, having experienced this uh, huge, dramatic shift in uh, not only in the, 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 uh, the architecture of, of, of the city uh, and in the, the, the life and atmosphere in the city, um, uh, but also, I guess, uh, a, a, a potential shift in how we thought about ourselves as artists and our relationship with this place. Um, we decided that what we wanted to do was to try to make a, a, a project that looked at that. Um, in the UK, in common with, with um, uh, many other situations, there, is, there, there, there has been something of a history of, uh, of artists taking up residence in, uh, in domestic situations, but they've, they've most often been in situations uh, where, shall we say, where uh, an artist has moved into an area uh, of, of some kind of deprivation or, or poverty or, or, or social problem. That's, that's where the, the, the engagement has been. Now, the, the shift in Manchester um, the, 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 the dramatic shift in, in the, the identity of the city, uh, certainly on the surface, isn't about that. It's, uh, it's about the provision of a, 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 of a new way of living for a new population. So what we wanted to do was to see if we could find a way of embedding ourselves in that situation. So in October uh, of this year, uh, so just a couple of months ago, uh, we took the keys um, for a brand new uh, house um, which sits on the border, uh, on the edge of the border between Manchester and its sister city of Salford. Uh, in, 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 in Britain, I think it's a unique situation in Britain that Manchester sits side by side with, its, with a neighbouring city. You, you cross... Uh, a bridge or you cross a road and you go from one city to the other. You, if, if you didn't know it, you wouldn't know it. Um, uh, however, they have very different characteristics, um, very different uh, histories, um, very different, uh, uh, perhaps quite different futures. Um, uh, we wanted to um, kind of put ourselves um, in, a, in an unfamiliar situation and I guess, uh, in a sense, try to uh, work out um, how to be part of uh, this rapid change and to confront what we perceived as uh, some of the challenges and, and, and problems of that. Um, one of the questions that I think we, we began to ask um, at the beginning, but which, which, is, which has certainly grown through our involvement in this project, in, in, in Meet the Neighbours, is what has this rapid change, or what is this rapid change doing to the notion of neighbourliness? Um, because not only are uh, these new apartments arriving and often in, uh, often in developments that are uh, consciously, consciously, deliberately designed so that they provide everything that you could need, some of, some of the developments you could live, work, shop, go to the gym, go to the restaurant, go to the cafe there, and never leave the same square kilometre. 
Um, people do, of course, but you could live a life uh, entirely on the estate that you live in. Um, I guess maybe some um, very different, but, but some kind of parallel perhaps with, with, with LSM, but uh, in, a, in a very different situation. Um, so we, 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 we rented this house. Um, the, uh, it, it sits, there's the river, that's the River Irwell. Um, that's, the, that's one of the boundaries between Manchester and Salford. The boundaries, sometimes the river, sometimes a road. Um, uh, that's the, that image of it looks very bucolic. It looked, that looks very lovely. Um, it's, it's not quite like that um, in reality. Um, the inter one of the very interesting things about, these, about the t the where we're making tenancy take place is that, it's, uh, is that they're houses. Um, there are very, very, very few new houses being built in Manchester. It's almost entirely, as you can see from some of the, the, the other buildings, it's almost entirely uh, tall apartment blocks because of availability of space. Um, but in this area, which was uh, 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 an empty site, um, the developers who are a, a, a local development company who really were uh, at the forefront of, uh, of some of Manchester's development over the last 20, 25 years, a company called Urban Splash, who specialised originally in the conversion of ex-industrial um, units, ex-industrial factories, into apartments. They've they've built these houses, and they built them in terraces. And I guess the terraced the terrace street um, is uh, very much part of the 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 vernacular architecture of of, of Britain, certainly of the north of England. Um, if you were to go outside the city centre into some of the, the suburban areas, so I guess Ben lives in a terraced house, Ali, you live in a terraced house. It's, it, it's the norm in the suburbs. You live next to your, next to your neighbours in, in a ribbon of houses. And so they've, they've, they've built a kind of contemporary version of this in the city centre, uh, in the city, near to the city centre. And our project is... Uh, to live in the house, or actually to invite artists to live in the house. Um, uh, I think we'd, we tried to be very clear um, that this is not a theatre, this is not a gallery, this is not a museum, it's a house to live in. Um, so we invite artists to live in the house, we invite them to get to know the neighbourhood, get to know their neighbours and leave some trace of their stay behind. That's the brief to the artists. We send them, uh, we send them a pack of information which keeps changing about uh, the, the uh, connected with the, the research of some of the issues that I've, I've just touched on. Um, and then we ask them to come and live in the house, spend time there um, and leave something behind. There's no... There's no uh, constraint nor uh, real influence on, on, on what they might leave behind. Um, we realised that what that because this is a very large and amorphous issue that we needed a kind of a, approach to it to perhaps um, frame or contain um, the, uh, the, the, the approach to the question. So I remembered um, doing a, an exercise at um, uh, at school, at primary school, in a in a nature class, where we would we were asked to to throw a hoop, like a hula hoop, like a plastic hoop, on the ground. Our teacher would say, "What do you see there?" And you say, "You can't see anything. It's just grass." And then throw a hoop on the ground, and the teacher would say, "Get on your hands and knees and have a look. Really have a look at what's there in the hoop." And you'd really have a look. And so I guess uh, we. In a sense, what we're trying to do is is uh, is follow the same approach to tenancy with with this house or the house that you saw to a Irwell Riverside um, as uh, as the uh, as the centre of the hoop. Um, I'll go back to that in a, in a second. Um, so we invite the artists to live in the house. Across the year, we have um, eight different sets of artists. Um, some of them are three of them. Three of the sets of artists are UK-based, um, uh, uh, working across different art forms, um, from performance through filmmaking, through choreography, to writers, um, 
uh, visual artists. And then um, some artists from Europe and further afield. Um, uh, they include uh, the uh, Belgian uh, artist performance maker Sarah Van Hey and her collaborator Flo Herman, um, uh, a, uh, a photographer who trained as an architect who's based in Istanbul called Ali Taptik. Um, Shaima Nader, who uh, I guess you might mention as, as well, that, that Francesca, we came across Shaima through Francesca. Shaima uh, was the, the first artist who undertook a residency at Le Dizuit in Marrakesh. Shaima's from uh, Palestine and has a, an interest in, in, in working uh, in, in projects around water, which I, I know that Francesca is going to talk about. And as you can see, the, the river Irwell is, is bordering, the house is bordering on the river Irwell. Uh, and then at the very end of our project, we'll invite um, uh, Janek Tukowski and Ivona Novac. Nov oh, I asked you and now it's gone wrong. Novatska. It was, I was so good at it before lunch. Um, uh, they, they are going to come right at the very end of, of, of our project and be our final artists, I guess, kind of wrapping up something of the project. Um, Whilst when artists aren't there, we quarantine, we have the kind of luxury uh, and the space, I guess, within the year of the project to be able to not only think about and respond to what the artists in residence make happen, but also to initiate our, our, own, our own projects and our own engagement with, with the neighbours and the neighbourhood. Um, so we... Um, we we have a, a, a kind of whole range of, of, uh, of activities uh, that have, have started to begin and, and will continue in the new year. Um, uh, projects around guided walks in the neighborhood, uh, lots of conversation-based work. Our, our work over the last 20 years has, has always been uh, around very direct relationships with people, with the public, with other people. Um, so this, this, is, this for us becomes a particular frame um, to occupy, uh, to continue uh, 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 the work that we've made for, for, for 20 years. Um, but we'll do that through, uh, through, the, through walks, through conversations, taking the form of lunches and dinners, mediated conversations, um, uh, and uh, uh, a specific example, um, we have, we have a, a resident philosopher, Quarantine has a resident philosopher who also happens to be one of my oldest friends, he's a professor of philosophy at Glasgow University, and Mike is going to come and, uh, Professor Brady, sorry, is going to come and uh, 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 lead an event around the notion of neighbourliness as a virtue. Um, so, uh, uh, really trying to bring a very, uh, I guess, very... Uh, uh, philosophical approach to the to some of the questions that are emerging through the, the through the project. Then, alongside that, we'll also run uh, surgeries and uh, encounters for uh, for local artists. Really uh, trying to get under the skin of questions around artists and their re and their relationship with the space that they live and work in. Um, <laughs> nearly there. Um, so. Uh, I'll whiz through. We, we, we commissioned a table. Um, uh, it felt like uh, the, the, the idea of having a table at the heart of this home was an important thing. Um, that uh, uh, we wanted a table that could, uh, could exist in different uh, relationships, constellations, and uh, that uh, we wanted to support a, 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 local, a local maker, so we, we made a table that becomes a, a kind of both a very practical solution and, I guess, a kind of uh, a, an interesting metaphor, if you like, for asking the question, who is at the table? That seems to, for us to be one of the, the key questions. Who is... Uh, Who's involved in this process of uh, in in the the, the the process of developing the city? Who who is invited to the table? Who's not part of that that conversation? Um, who's left out? Who's left behind? Um, 
we've uh, over the last couple of months we've involved ourselves in lots of meetings and encounters with um, a, a range of individuals uh, in the city from professor of urban planning the the directors of uh, planning and and the director of of city center regeneration at the, at the city council with housing activists um, uh, with uh, I made a dinner for the board of directors of the property developers who who who, uh, who built the houses, um, and a, and a sort of a, a very strong thing that's come out of that for me is this that this sense that although there is absolute um, uh, disagreement and uh, 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 variance in the way that uh, that each of those individuals and those parties um, think about and approach the issue um, there's uh, there's also something um, very telling that 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 each of them every single one has an absolute passion for and commitment and belief in the fact that they think their their approach is the right one to develop the, the city of Manchester. So I think there's something, there's something that at the heart of our tenancy project, which is about trying to potentially bring some of those voices around that table. Well, perfect final <laughs> words for this <laughs> presentation. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. And it's always good to have a carpenter to make a table for a residency so that at least not all furnitures are made by IKEA in there. So maybe that could be a rule for all residencies. Um, Francesca, if you would take the floor. So hello everyone, um, I'm Francesca Mazzero, I work in Marrakesh at the Jesuit. I hope you're all not falling asleep already. Uh, my presentation is going to be very colorful, so uh, hopefully it's going to help you be awake. Is it already? Oops, no, it's the opposite. Um, yeah. is a, isn't it the full screen option? Okay. Uh, view? It's okay. Um, as I'm not very good at speaking in public, I actually wrote my text and then uh, so I will um, go through it and try to s stay more or less in time. Firstly, I want to thank Gregos and Marta for the welcoming. Um, uh, and the efforts in the program, and also uh, in the simplicity of the question asked through this symposium in general, and for this session specifically. Um, what do we know so far is supposedly very simple, uh, but requiring actually a good level of modesty and honesty to find an answer, as well as a good amount of time to formulate a proper one. Uh, so while well, thinking about pertinent temporary questions uh, to share with you today in relation to the evolution of, of CANAT, uh, the project that we are developing also as part of Meet the Neighbors. I was happening to be reading, uh, preparing for the not yet, an essay, um, an essay by Dutch artist uh, uh, Janne van Heeswijk, reflecting on agency as a collective endeavor um, and setting some proposed lines of thinking uh, and an open-ended agenda to help defining how we as cultural actors could or should engage in a collective yet to come, um, yet to be built. While encouraging all of you to have a look at uh, the text uh, which is available online and also at her work in general, uh, my proposal here is to share some thoughts related to the accumulated experiences linked to Canat and to Le Dizuit in general. Um, combining some of my conclusions uh, with some of the suggestions that are presented in uh, her text. Uh, I believe that Le Dizuit and Kanat, as well as many initiatives that are led by the people in this room, uh, are going in the direction of trying to create uh, those spaces that can prepare us for the not yet. Um, 
Um, but before bringing you to Morocco, uh, I would like to share some concepts that I think uh, resume pretty much what we have come up to know so far. Um, I believe that for uh, us what is of utmost importance is to take the time, the right time, to try to understand space and through that to try to define and redefine our own place. In other words, it is important to understand positions in space, mapping different ways of being and seeing, um, understanding power dynamics, normalized modes of functioning, uh, its resistances and the spaces in between, in order to set our positioning uh, while also setting our actions as open processes. I believe it is fundamental uh, to create spaces, uh, to allow ourselves and others to be effective and be affected, uh, to be sensitive to one another, uh, to listen and take some risks of getting off track, of living on the side part of our own subjectivity uh, and indeed authorship, uh, and to let in some traces of the others. This means to learn how to unlearn uh, or to understand differently and reroute uh, us uh, with others otherwise. Um, and finally, I think it is really important to be critical and self-critical knowing um, uh, our own external and internal limits uh, and also uh, being willing to open spaces uh, and projects in collaboration with others. So now let me move to our project and uh, uh, the context in which we work. Um, Ladies Wit was created in, uh, um, in 2013 by uh, artist Leila Ida, um, which I joined in 2015, and it is a multidisciplinary cultural space based in Marrakesh. A well-known uh, tourist destination, um, uh, often subject to substantial exotization, primarily um, consequence of the quasi-sole representation of the city as encapsulated by the Medina, the old or the Arab city, uh, portrayed uh, as an essentially chaotic, colorful, noisy, messy, uh, somehow pre-modern uh, territory inhabited by traditional craftsmen um, as well as snake charmers and storytellers uh, populating Jamalevna, which is the main square uh, in the Medina. The Medina is though uh, not only colorful uh, slippers or fancy riads and increasingly fashion boutiques, it is also the era of the city in which a relative poor population still lives, uh, though increasingly pushed out due to gentrification forces. It embodies also the heart of the uh, ancestral traditions, knowledges, and heritages of a millennial and eclectic civilization, uh, today at risk because of a lack of strategy or, I would say, maybe political interest uh, in its sustainable pre uh, preservation or reinvention. Um, so, yeah. so this is the Medina of the postcard. Um, uh, Marrakesh, though, uh, is quite more extended than the Sol Medina. It has two central districts, Giliz and a uh, fancier uh, district called Ivernage, uh, both heritage of the French protectorate and housing primarily the expat uh, community and the middle and middle higher uh, Moroccan classes. Uh, farther away from the center uh, is... Um, farther away from the centers... Um, I lost my point. Uh, there are uh, various kind of districts more or less uh, degraded, uh, as well as some industrial ones, uh, that are nonetheless neighbored uh, by luxury golf resorts. Uh, and actually here I would like to mention that in Marrakesh there are uh, at least 15 of them, uh, which is a quite telling number for a city that lives in a semi-desertic area. Um, finally, the palm grove. Um, uh, historically, the green lung of the city, somehow a functional garden, traditionally embodying both the main green space for the Marakshi uh, and the city food reservoir, uh, is today half dried out and half transformed in an exclusive secluded residential area with vi villas and swimming pools and all that comes with it. So modern reforms uh, and more recent neoliberal policies have altered uh, profoundly previous equilibriums in the whole country uh, and produced uh, deep transformations whose direction does not require much analytical skill to answer the question for whom and in whose benefit. 
uh, what I see as a consequence at the city level uh, is that the social and even stratification of opportunity and risk distribution matches to some extent uh, a spatial organization. So while young and uh, more educated Moroccans avoid the Medina today as being perceived as either too poor and dangerous or as a spectacle for tourists, the urban transformation I sketch have some results um, have uh, also resulted in a drastic reduction of both intimate and public spaces uh, to assemble and socialize. Um, and actually here there are some telling images of an old um, map of the city with both the Medina and a relatively small uh, external area. Today, as you see, everything is completely built. And the second uh, one shows, it's a very bad quality picture, I'm sorry, uh, but shows how f already from the protectorate time, um, the um, uh, green spaces inside the Medina have basically disappeared. Uh, so now the creation function and functioning of Lady Suite has uh, somehow intuitively tried to respond to and position vis-a-vis -vis, uh, some of these dynamics. As I mentioned, Lady Suite uh, is a multidisciplinary cultural space um, uh, and residency space located inside the Medina um, and hosted in a traditional dar, a traditional house. Uh, its creation came from a very personal desire from Leila that you see jumping in the picture, um, <laughs> to create a safe and intimate space of expression as feeling uh, that something was missing uh, and hence identifying a response at their own scale. Since its inception, uh, one of the main objectives has been to sustain the local emerging artists um, um, and to connect them with the international art scene. Um, as a residency space, it has allowed foreign artists to engage with the city, giving uh, uh, oneself some time to navigate it uh, possibly otherwise. Um, and uh, um, yeah. Here are some other pictures. Uh, the space uh, has been uh, able, I believe, to maintain the intimacy and informality of a house and has become a communal point uh, and a space of discussion and exchange, uh, gathering and partly creating uh, an expanding community. Lady Sweet also offers a really uh, yearly running uh, programmation spanning from visual arts uh, to performance, from cinema to literature, uh, with a key transdisciplinary vocation connecting artistic um, research with social theory. Um, it is a space allowing for the production of critical research and discourse uh, while testing uh, new and experimental methodologies. Um, uh, by uh, indeed the self-critical reflection uh, of the ambiguous role that contemporary art performs in the city has been always pa uh, very much uh, present in, in our um, activities or way of thinking about it. And one of the ways we have tried to deal with it is on the one hand uh, that we have tried to withhold some uh, normalized understandings of how an art space should operate to adapt uh, at least partly to the specific context uh, in which we are. Uh, for instance, um, by making our a specific temporality. And in fact, uh, our instituting process um, uh, has built up uh, quite organically and carefully adapting to the pace of our surrounding environment uh, while working through affiliations and affinities, evolving through time um, uh, in increasingly uh, dialogue with various and diverse realities in Marrakesh and in uh, uh, Morocco, and thanks to encounters, um, dispositions, and friendship. Um, um, if I can truly argue that Lady Sweet has succeeded uh, in bringing together a community of both practitioners and not practitioners that today perceive the space as a common and as a safe one, uh, most of the programs that we have run until last year had remained within our walls. Um, the, uh, the still diverse group uh, for and with whom I believe we work, uh, hence belong to a general extent to the art and the cultural community, uh, the students and the educated uh, youth. 
a challenge that we felt was in front of us, and I think that it's still in front of us to, to a certain extent at least, uh, is to start getting closer and open to our um, closest neighbors. Um, it is a challenging terrain. Um, some challenges are related to language, to human resources, since we're an extremely small association. Uh, but uh, another one, it's also a spatial one. Um, there are maybe not so invisible borders. Uh, there are hardly, uh, that it's hard to cross for a certain segment of the population. Um, uh, as we are uh, perceived as an art institution or, or gallery that is frequented by an eclectic and partly also quite Western um, crowd. Uh, so Kanat has been set up um, in continuity with the long-term trajectory of Lodi Suite uh, and with the particular willingness to uh, test ourselves in new terrains by engaging more proactively in public or rather common concerns uh, and spaces of intervention. Um, Canat is in fact a long-term uh, transdisciplinary project that we initiated in 2017, which aims to critically reflect on and act upon the politics and poetics of water in Morocco, while also aiming at creating a space of exchange and reflection on the possibility for artistic and curatorial methodologies uh, to be catalysts or facilitators for the reactivation of the collective memory of traditional water cultures and for engaging in fostering a collective agency in fighting for the right uh, to the commons and for the creation uh, possibly of a common. Uh, it is a quite ambitious project um, um, that we envision as working on the one hand very contextually uh, in relation to Marrakesh, uh, while it is also growing as a transnational and methodologically diverse platform, uh, a curated network of people um, with resonating passions that are helping us to map what commons may mean uh, and how the project could develop by bringing forth knowledges, narratives and visions of the past arrangements and present configurations and future imageries of, uh, of water. In the context of the project, water and canats uh, themselves are interpreted uh, both literally and as a metaphor. The canats, or hetaras, um, are, oh, are where the historical water system uh, that was then dismissed and dismant dismantled since the protectorate, um, but that uh, made Marrakesh become known as the garden city. Uh, supplying it uh, with underground waters from the neighboring mountains and creating also a very specific social contract that operated within and beyond uh, the city borders um, and feed um, commun uh, communal spaces uh, such as the now quasi disappeared gardens and the palm grove. Um, what we try to explore is what effects has their decline had on residents' uh, relationship with water and more generally with the idea of the commons, uh, of public spaces and of being in common. Uh, what legacies do the traditional system of the Kanat have today and which acts of resistance to water privatization exist and how can we uh, engage them or net them together? As a metaphor, the Kanat is a rhizomatic system of underground channels and wells, of connecting feeding lines and circles, circles that in the Moroccan culture directly relate to the concept of the Halka, an horizontal circular constellation of people that comes together and in which knowledge and stories circulate, erasing distinctions between the performers and the audience. Um, Currently, we are still at the stage of mapping, uh, mapping positions, but also dispositions, visions, and strategies, emerging both from inhabitants' testimonies, uh, existing artistic and cultural projects, and militant campaigns and civil struggles in Morocco. This mapping process uh, started in 2017 uh, through multiple formats and configurations, artistic residency programs, of course, uh, but also setting up temporary spaces for knowledge production and sharing, um, such as exhibitions, presentations, workshops, interventions in public space, collaborative researches and uh, collective cartographies. Um, an example of this has been uh, the five days uh, of the event Kanat Performing Change from the Margins that we organized this last November, uh, so some weeks before, uh, ago. 
um, the five days represented a moment to bring together a diverse, a, a diverse set of actors either engaged in water or this one. Um, um, either uh, engage in water uh, specifically uh, from a research or an activist perspective or engage in, in, uh, in social and participatory methods at uh, the urban level in Morocco. The program also represented um, um, space to experiment collaborative participatory methods uh, ourselves, such as collective cartographic experiments uh, with the participants and uh, with students uh, from Casablanca. Um, we also organized uh, city tours, which we had done already actually last year, uh, with the bikes in the, inside the Palmeré. Um, to trace uh, the water systems and to share uh, knowledges about uh, um, about uh, what is happening there, um, and also interventions in the neighborhood, uh, often led by artists, both in the direction of collecting uh, the memories of the inhabitants on water commons and common spaces, um, but also in the direction of stimulating their imagination for the future. And actually, this specific intervention was co-led by Jérôme Gillet, which is the second artist in residence in, invited in the context of the neighbors. And um, it, the idea uh, for, for that intervention was to stimulate uh, particularly the kids of the neighborhood to think about um, green spaces and, and oasis, uh, and to create a forest of signs related to uh, what we would find in an ideal garden, um, and then we circulated it across the across the district through a march that was quite uh, funny, actually. Um, uh, in the developments of Kanat, uh, the involvement of vari various artists. You want that one? <laughs> In the developments of Kanat, the involvement of various artists uh, since last year uh, has been uh, quite es essential. Firstly, to concur to map uh, and research uh, the spaces of water in Marrakesh. Um, and the works that we presented in the exhibition from last year, uh, it was December last year, um, with six different artists, partly from Morocco, partly from abroad, uh, went in that direction uh, and were grounded on a various uh, and different um, uh, mediums uh, and poetical languages, uh, and some of which spurring from direct work and engagement with specific, uh, more or less proximate communities. Uh, from 2018, uh, thanks also to Meet the Neighbors, we have been having two um, artists in residence, uh, both of them who had already participated in uh, the project the year before. Um, this is somehow what, what we are uh, trying to do in order to overcome the problem of not having or feeling that we never have enough time for the artists to go in depth uh, with, uh, with their researches and, and particularly when approaching uh, specific communities uh, that we keep uh, certain flexibility and try to bring them back, back as much as possible so we privilege long-term relationship with some artists with whom we feel that there is an affiliation and, and, an, and an affinity. Uh, so Jérôme uh, Gillet is a Belgian artist. Um, he's concluding this week's, uh, his second residency. And uh, these are pictures from last year. Um, last year he developed an early uh, subjective cartographic research uh, that it was combined with uh, public walks along the river of Marrakesh. Uh, while, um, well, in the context, as I was saying, in the context of the um, of the um, uh, five days, uh, and in November he co-initiated the, the the march uh, of the oasis in the in the neighborhood, and uh, he also collected uh, other testimonies linked also to public fountains that are disappearing in the Medina right now, um, and uh, the major project that is developing for the residency specifically is uh, uh, related, uh, I mean, is related to um, 
uh, weaving, uh, in the sense that he has started a collaborative uh, work with the women weavers of a cooperative called uh, Anguan, that means All United, uh, that is located in a city a little bit outside uh, Marrakesh. Um, he's linking the carpet and the art of weaving in the Amazir culture. Amazir is Berber, is a privileged way of defining Berber because Berber reminds to the barbarian, etc. So um, in Morocco, most of the people prefer to define themselves Berber, um, Amazir rather than Berber. Um, and for those that don't know, it's the, let's say, autochthonous population that existed before the arrival of the uh, Arabs and, and before Muslim. Um, so he's connecting uh, the specific tradition of weaving in the Amazir culture to the question of water um, uh, through a reflection of, uh, on the space of the common. Um, and he has proposed to the women of the community, uh, of the community, of the cooperative, to translate their imaginaries of water um, uh, through the production, uh, through the collective production of a carpet. Uh, in the Amazir culture, carpets are, in fact, uh, not just decorative objects, uh, but they also perform functional, social, communal, and communicative tasks. Um, so as such, the carpet can be read as a common social space. Uh, and so Jerome's uh, project is also exploring and questioning the, the tradition and the modernity of the carpet, uh, the transmission of know-how, uh, and the view that women have uh, in the landscapes that surround them. Um, uh, as, I, uh, as it has happened already before, uh, his work is still in process, so even though he's living in a couple of weeks, he will be coming back in 2019 to continue and finish this first carpet and engage either with the same cooperative or, or possibly with others uh, in, Ma in Morocco uh, in the future. Um, I think something interesting, at least for the Morocco, um, the, our, our context, is that uh, we, um, we have quite uh, a lot discuss the question of the legitimacy uh, of the position of a Well, maybe I, I, I skipped the legitimacy question, but uh, for later. <laughs> but there is a legitimacy question that uh, is there. Um, uh, the other uh, artist that we had in residence is Shaima Nader, who is a Palestinian artist uh, that uh, came also already in 2017 and back in 2018. She has been working on an extremely interesting case and a very rare one in, um, in Morocco related to uh, water struggles. She, she has been working with, um, um, it's a set of villages, a community composed by different villages in the southeast of Morocco. Uh, they are facing um, a mine uh, owned by the king uh, that uh, since the 80s is uh, badly polluting uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the water and, and the land uh, in front of them. What they have been doing uh, since uh, 2011 is to occupy um, the mountain in front of the mine and uh, trying to cut the pipes, the, 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 the water pipes um, that, um, that, uh, that, that was, were bringing uh, at least part of the water to the mine. Uh, this, both me and, and Shaima spent some time with them, Shaima more than me. Uh, it is a, a extremely um, hardcore situation, I would say, uh, in the sense that it really looks like a war of positions. Uh, uh, of course, the mine is trying to, um, to, to make them die autonomously uh, after years and years of, of uh, physical uh, occupation uh, of, a, um, of, this, of this area. Um, what is very interesting and what Shaima has been looking at, she's, uh, she's very interested in what in the role of music as a form of resistance uh, in, uh, in struggles. And actually, um, this uh, population, this community, has been redefined and, let's say, reactivated or readapted uh, a traditional uh, form of sung poetry 
to um, uh, both communicate and, and uh, somehow uh, reinforce their struggle. So she has been uh, recording and, and, and trying to understand and translating uh, the various set of songs that have been uh, produced throughout this eight year of, um, of um, occupation of the mountain. Um, and we were supposed to have this ready already, but uh, it's not ready uh, yet. But there will be an album uh, that will be released, and it's going to be a way to narrate the, the history of this movement. Um, I guess I'll finish here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, um, now we have a um, couple of minutes left to... Uh, to, um, and I was kind of thinking um, actually what to do with it, which is not so easy because uh, it's uh, interesting he listening to the project again to see, I mean, in one hand, they all have something in common, but then they're actually quite, quite different from the approach. Whom do they approach? What kind of neighbors they are looking for? Uh, how do they position themselves between um, uh, uh, participatory work, uh, creating own work, etc. So I think actually it covers quite, quite a lot of things and, uh, and uh, um, uh, and it covers a lot of, of, of problems, I would also say, but which you already mentioned and which would take another hour to ask the leg legitimacy of, of certain positive questions question of who represents, of, how, of what are power relations and so on. But you all, they all are already implied in the projects also. There's an awareness, obviously, for it. I, w I would say, uh, in a way, to, to make, a, um, uh, to make a, a sketch of what, what is the, maybe the intention of these projects uh, uh, to different degrees, uh, uh, but uh, aspects of it that, that I would see is one hand is the uh, obviously, even and I, I, the, with the words I use, it will show the problems of it. But also, I don't mean it that negative because there is a le legitimacy also for that. I would say there is this kind of a uh, expedition aspect in it to a certain degree, which means on one hand, I guess a certain research. So, so that's why I don't mean it so negatively because there is an interest in understanding something, doing research. But then the other part of the expedition, bringing something back. What, whatever that is and what problems that m might bring with it, but, you, uh, but uh, the, the bringing back an artwork and uh, a result or whatever to another audience, for example, or to, to the institution, so there's this aspect in it. There's sometimes the aspect in it, of course, how the artistic work, the work that is done at this moment, is going to be changed uh, by the situation, which you also referred to with John's uh, uh, quotes. Um, uh, there's probably something about how maybe, maybe the whole artistic practice, not only of this project, might be changed, but, but in, a, in a larger scale. And then as maybe... Uh, um, the last step in this <laughs> logic is how is the institution? Is there the aim that the institution changes somehow uh, uh, through that? And maybe um, uh, for the last moments we have, um, uh, let's, let's look for a moment in this because it relates a bit to questions that were there already during the day and yesterday. Um, the question of the change of the institution, if you could maybe briefly... Uh, at the moment where you are in the middle of the project, anticipate where is the... Do you already anticipate the point where you would say, ah, the, 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 uh, the, there's the limit of the institutional frame or the, uh, the artistic, but the, the institutional frame we work in and actually if we would want to continue in this way, something actually has to change within the institution actually. And, and, and is, that, is that also something uh, which m might be, first of all, not easy to answer, but that's why I ask it. Uh, but second, uh, something that is in a way also maybe um, uh, might hurt. You know, like not, not only saying, yeah, okay, we need to put 10,000 more into the project for next time or whatever, but like where is something where it say, no, maybe something in the structure, maybe something deeper has to change, which is a huge question. So I'm not uh, asking for an answer, but like maybe a, a small encounter uh, towards this pro problem that you might have had in the, in the work so far. It's very abstract, but I think maybe you, you, I hope you understand what I'm aiming at. But just take a shot at it. <laughs> Um, I guess, uh, well, if I have to answer for Kanat specifically, I think it is, it is a, I mean, the ambitions of the project could bring it out of the institution and make it leave it 
alone in a way or on its own um, we also do, and we don't want to to set a too clear agenda on on the direction of it because what I would like to create is more a platform in which other people come in and and co-define with us where to lead it in a way I mean we we have some plans uh, for it uh, but uh, it's, it, they will require a proper budget, so I'm, I'm not sure it will happen uh, very, very soon. Um, in terms of Lady Sweet, and uh, I think we are on the, I mean, Kanat is not the only project we are doing to, to sort of redefine uh, or ameliorate certain things in terms of uh, working um, with new audiences or working uh, more in a, a more engaged way in the city and in the city transformations. Um, so no, I think it, it, it is nicely and slowly coming together uh, little by little and but very much little by little because the question of time and is a, is a very important, I think, and, and yeah. Um, uh, I think... Uh, uh, that we feel like there's a, there's a kind of um, uh, a, a sort of paradox at play that we feel like we're still at the very very beginning uh, of our project, but in reality we're a quarter of the way through. So so far we've had uh, we've had one artist residency that's been completed and one that is a quarter of the way through it, and that yeah. feels significant because I think something that that we've realised very early on. Uh, through the practice of making the project rather than the the, the, the planning of it um, that the we're, our artists are cuckoos in the nest um, that they're they're arriving somewhere for a very short amount of time um, and uh, and and then they disappear and I think we recognize our own role in that and our own relationship with that even 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 at this stage. Um, and that has that's that's both a kind of positive and a negative. Um, that uh, it's it's already may it's already prompted us to begin to have conversations about what might be for us the long term the longer term uh, impacts on. Uh, I hesitate to describe quarantine as any kind of institution, but um, uh, uh, on our on our on our practice and our, uh, uh, the, the, the way that we're structured, the way that we work together. Uh, and it seems like this, this situation of having, having a house to live in, having a house surrounded by neighbors, having a house that, uh, w that we can welcome people into that isn't an office, that has a table in it, where people can come and stay, that exists in close proximity to, to a neighborhood, is, is an incredibly attractive thing. Uh, and could be a very and could be a very productive long term uh, space for us. Um, so a sort of yeah a, a complicated thing. With your project, I would say one one of the crucial points, of course, obviously and, and, and intentionally, is that you put you, you you put yourself in a situation which is not so bad. First of all, I mean, all your neighbors uh, are very happy that they just bought this house, so 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 it's not exactly uh, an, 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 an un un pleasant situation in, in that regard and you do it with money from the developers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so you 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 also you 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 so in a way your project very much shows the dilemmas mm. i guess uh, what one is in and is mm. it, do you feel that you reach some limits or uh, the, in the line you ba you balancing on here is is, is there, do you feel uh, I don't, I don't. Uh, you got into something that you cannot handle and control anymore maybe also in terms of like uh, um, what uh, that you become a uh, uh, i would not say a marionette but to a certain <laughs> degree somebody who p who plays for somebody else's agenda and uh, uh, in fact not at all i don't think I, uh, that there's no i don't i don't feel there's a sense of that i think that um we in in the in the relationship with the with the developer in the relationship with um the the stakeholders if you like in the project from the outset we've 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 tried to be very 
open and, and explicit about what, what the, the project might deal with, and that there's been no, uh, as yet, no, uh, no indication from... Well, they got the cultural centre for free, which, which they didn't do put in their development, huh? so the neighbours in terms of making yeah. the place more valuable. Yeah, but I think there's, um, there's something... Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't feel that there's a... a, a uh, that we've kind of fallen off the, the 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 line that we that we started on. I think it's just that simply through the experience, the practical experience of uh, of of being in the house and living in the neighbourhood, there's the those two uh, strong senses um, that this is a this is a, this is a really interesting productive situation to be in and this ephemeral version of it in this very particular situation with with tenancy uh, might lead us on to other versions of that other longer term versions in different situations in the future um, and uh, yeah as i said that the 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 brevity of of the uh, of the artist residencies um, brings with it both uh, certain kind of clarity um, but also challenges that, that, that are difficult to overcome. That's something you, you already uh, also says, mentioned, mentioned, uh, mentioned the, the question that uh, not, a neighbor cannot just leave uh, after a while. So, so the question of sustainability uh, and also long-term engagement, which would be very difficult, I guess, or is always very difficult in the way for institution, uh, might might be one of the challenges, I guess. So, so is after meet the neighbors, you will leave and that, say that's nice, a uh, nice experience. We put it in our yearbook and, uh, and now let move on. Or do you do you think this can be something where you will permanently engage in some way? No, I think it could be something really engaged. Um, but I think uh, it's more what we began uh, with the, the, the residence, Brian Art. Uh, I think it as a narrative story. I don't know exactly which, and I like that, because nobody knows the end today. Uh, but I'm sure it's really interesting to have some uh, moments, different moments, to, to relate a story. And the artists we we're inviting in residency will contribute and invent imagine this story. Um, I was really interested. I have the, I've got the same feeling than Richard about the time, uh, the time uh, towards the project and in the project, uh, and feel we are at the beginning. Uh, we have two residences, in fact, I didn't told it, uh, but uh, Richard in quarantine has been coming at the beginning, but it was not exactly a residency uh, with, ne with the question the, uh, of neighborhood, it was a show, um, it was an artistic adventure, really great, but it was a bit something else. Um, I was really interested about uh, what you said, Richard, about the house, the question of the house that you encounter really in tenancy project, literally. And I feel maybe there's someone, there's some, something institution like the Comedy de Bethune, um, uh, one of the limits could be that this theater is not really a house. Because uh, very obviously, uh, we don't work at night. Uh, it's really difficult, but maybe possible, just like, like Nick uh, told it, to invite some neighbors to live in the comedy between, maybe. Maybe that's something to change, I don't know. But there is something in this project which is uh, really in, in deep connection with the question of house. That's all for the moment. Thanks. And Nick, you, you, you mentioned something which I find very interesting in this regard, because it, it quite to the, towards the end where you said maybe the criteria we have, or in this case you have as, a, as an institution or an organization, might have to change if they don't fit for certain uh, things. Uh, you, you raised this question, which is a big question, but um, uh, uh, yeah, I found that quite, quite a challenge uh, for, for an institution or any artistic uh, project to say, ah, what, what are we... What is with the limits of our criteria of, of artistic quality, for example? 
Yeah, but even uh, more fundamental, what, what our, our ideas of what is art to people. Um, but let me start. We, like I said, we really use this project to shape ourselves as a new institution. I don't mind being an institution, actually. I like being an institution um, as Grand Theater uh, because it makes people, it makes it in a way, I think, uh, more attractive to connect to you, but that's a different uh, thing. We, we use the project to shape ourselves after, uh, as a new team, re restarting the organization. And we already decided to continue the idea of the, the, the house exchanges after the EU project. So we're, uh, at the moment we're thinking of a new um, continuation of the project um, uh, in, after 20, from 2020. Uh, because it's helping us so much to, to, to uh, how do you say that, to look from our place in the center of the city to the surrounding uh, and changing, rapidly changing situation. We want to be of importance to people living in the city, but if the city changes, we have to change. That's the basic uh, idea. And um, one thing we are, we found two things. One thing uh, that we really do need to be more of an institution because the first two projects were completely chaotic, um, and so we need more structure. We need more support. We we've completely forgot the really important phase of evaluation. Just forgot to plan it. That kind of thing. We really have to structure <laughs> these uh, projects in a better way. But on the other hand. Um, they gave us so much energy already and so much, uh, um, so many new ideas uh, that were really uh, growing as an organization because of this. And that's also why we want to continue because we just enjoy it very much. But the criteria is also a very practical thing. I had a, uh, no, we had as a team a conversation and, and our programmer, and, and some of you know her, Judith Blankenberg, she's a really good programmer, and she raises the question, does this mean I have to change my program? in the next couple of years, because if we connect to more um, uh, people and communities in the city and we want to be relevant to them, does it mean I have to change my program? And we haven't answered it yet, but that's of course the question that's, that comes up. I think uh, we're a bit over time, but we started a bit late, so we just, uh, maybe we can take, uh, if there's a question, comment, uh, then we can still take it. Five, four, three, two, one. No, then uh, <laughs> then we continue the conversation in the uh, over. Um, I, I don't really say coffee, but uh, maybe tea. Uh, and <laughs> and um, uh, I guess the lo yeah. I, I think a lot of the topics are, are raised in there, um, and uh, will for, uh, we will hopefully have other opportunities in other cities to look how how these things develop in in the future. Thanks a lot for listening. Thanks a lot for talking.